What's up, YouTube? Welcome to Bible Wisdom. You know, I wanted to talk about peace. Um, I wanted to share some points about how to have peace. Um, there are times where there are, you know, different situations that can bring troubling thoughts to us, um, troubling uh, things in our life. Um, there's times in our life where we can have this spirit of fear. Um, and I think it's important one to not only watch this video, but watch other videos that talk about peace, but really also, you know, you've heard this probably before, if you're watching this video is to go to the word of God, um, and really listening to what God has to say about peace. Um, but also it seems to be that sometimes there are, um, some troubling situations in life um, as a test, but also, um, maybe God wants to bring about some sort of change in our life. Um, and it seems like all throughout scripture, um, there are people who are godly that have gone through some sort of trouble. Um, you know, Jesus said that in this world, we will have trouble, but take heart that he has overcome the world. So um, we know that from that statement, you know, Jesus is saying that he overcame the trouble of the world and our victory lies through Jesus. And so that's one of the biggest things that come to my mind is that, you know, we're going to only find victory through Jesus and the ways that he has taught us and the different things that relate to that. Um you know, we're not necessarily going to um, find the solution outside of that is my point. Um, even though there could be things that we need to do um, that maybe the Bible doesn't necessarily um, specifically um, talk about. And maybe that's where counsel from godly people comes in, where they can tell you um, how they have found victory in a certain situation um, and I guess my point is that maybe they can explain a little bit more from a biblical standpoint and give more of an explanation that the Bible kind of leaves open to um, discover for ourselves. But um, one Bible verse that I think of for peace is um, that whoever wants to love life and see good days, um, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from deceitful speech turn away from evil and do good and seek peace and work to maintain it. So um, there's a few things that point out um, that come to me in that verse is one, seeking for peace and working constantly or every day, maybe not in a, such a stressful manner, but constantly um, working to maintain that peace. And so I think that's important. And then also turning away from evil, you know, the obvious things that um, the Bible talks about is evil. Um, you know, um, it could be sexual sin. It could be, um, you know, uh, drunkenness. You know, those are a few things that come to my mind. Um, uh, it could be, um, you know, lying. Obviously, the biggest thing that um, this scripture points out is, you know, having a deceitful mouth or not speaking the truth. Um those are the biggest things that this particular Bible verse brings out that um, it seems like um, we will lose peace if we are doing any type of lying, uh, any type of deceitful speech. And, um, you know, we have to turn away from those things. It's not necessarily um, so much to condemn us because, you know, it says that Jesus was given to us from the father, God, not to condemn us, you know? So, um, it's in order to turn us away from the error of our ways. Um, and so I guess the biggest thing that I want to bring out for this video, um, would be those points that are in that scripture is, you know, repenting of any type of lying that we do, um, any type of deceit that we are living in or, or giving off. Um, you know, an example is sometimes when, you know, um, you've 
you could be talking to an employer. For me, sometimes, you know, in order to get the job, maybe you're trying to really sell yourself. And so, um, you know, I think we have to definitely make sure we're not doing any type of lying in, you know, any situation, um, especially when, you know, uh, we want to come off as godly or we don't want to necessarily um, show everyone exactly what we have done. And so um, a solution we could think of is, oh, you know, I want to not fully tell the truth. And, you know, I think also we need to use discretion sometimes. Discretion means, you know, um, using wisdom and how we share certain things, how we confess our sins. Um, because, you know, um, the Bible does say that discretion is important. And discretion, again, is, um, you know, saying something in a way that is um, safe, saying something in a way that is um, honoring. Um, but at the same time, you know, um, we definitely need to tell the truth. Um, and God promises that in a lot of situations, when we are telling the truth, it's going to work better than, you know, lying because we're going to have peace. Um, so this could be, you know, especially in court, you know, uh, if you're faced with some sort of court issue, if you're faced with some sort of uh, legal matter, or if you are, you know, um, maybe not that serious, uh, something as simple as schoolwork or, um, you know, talking with your parents, maybe talking with your spouse, you know, um, being honest in all situations. You know, there's um, certain examples in scripture where someone has, um, you know, really told the truth, but um, maybe it was not in the right complete way or something like that. Um, and so, you know, Abraham, for example, told someone, you know, oh, you know, Sarah is my sister. And he did that in order to um, save himself from death, but also save himself from getting his wife taken. And, you know, in that example, he was showing that, you know, he did say, well, she really is my sister. And so in a way, he wasn't necessarily lying. And I think from that point of view, I think what we can learn from that is there are certain situations where maybe you have to use discretion in that, you know, you should tell the truth, but not necessarily, um, you know, reveal every single detail about the certain situation. So, you know, that's what we can learn from that situation. But, you know, we are supposed to tell the truth and um, that is what um, God says can lead to peace. You know, touching on the other categories would be, um, you know, um, working to maintain peace. You know, if you have to apologize to your spouse, um, doing, doing that, you know, um, if you have to stop a certain behavior um, in your, with your spouse or with your children or with your friends or your parents or um, uh, God, you know, um, working to maintain that peace between those relationship is something that we need to do in order to keep peace. Because um, maybe there could be s some uh, turmoil or trouble within your heart. Because in, cer in some certain area in your life, you haven't um, maintained joy or peace with, uh, or maybe not joy, but peace between you and someone in your life. So, um, that's one thing that I kind of picture in this, uh, uh, verse, this Bible verse that's found in Peter. And he's really quoting, um, the book of Psalms, but you can find it. If you do a Bible search in the book of Peter, it's either first Peter or second Peter. And, um, he's talking about how to, love life and see good days. Um, and so, you know, back to the, um, what Jesus said was, you know, um, in this world, we are going to 
you know, most likely run into some sort of troubling situation. You know, um, not everybody. I mean, every, we can almost assume that every single person, you know, billions of people go through some sort of situation that is troubling. And so um, what separates us from the world is that, you know, Jesus, he went through a troubling situation, which was the cross in order to do so many things, you know, like bring us life. You know, God was ready to destroy mankind, but Jesus stepped in to bring us life. Um, you know, he also stepped in to bring us salvation over sin, victory over sin. And so um, there are certain situations where, you know, we need to be making sure that we are doing what Jesus has asked us to do through the word of God, um, through obeying the gospel, um, things like forgiveness or um, you know, things like uh, treating others how we want to be treated. Um, and those things are obviously um, a lot easier said than done. And so, um, you know, really, I think prayer is going to be very important in um, overcoming a lot of these things. Um, and then how are we resisting the enemy? You know, um, we need to you know, make sure we're listening to the right music, you know, um, watching the right movies, you know, guarding our heart, um, you know, um, obviously saying the right thing. We've talked about that earlier. Um, and then what are some everyday things, you know, not hanging out with certain people that aren't, you know, going to lead you in the right way. Um, that is probably the biggest thing, you know, for me, for so many years, I was, you know, listening to the wrong music. Um, and I was watching the wrong things on the internet. And, um, a lot of that brought destruction into my life in certain areas, you know? And so, um, you know, it's crazy how you can be thinking something is okay. And it's, you know, not fully the best that God wants us to have. And so, um, you know, I think that's important is, you know, guarding our heart. Um, and then, you know, listening to, uh, you know, people who have found peace, you know, um, and really humbling ourselves to try to listen to them as best as we can, which is hard because, you know, sometimes we want to do things our way. Um, you know, and I think, that is prayer as well as asking Jesus, you know, Hey, please help me out in this situation. And, you know, um, I think also turning away from evil, you know, um, and really sowing that seed, I guess would mean, you know, continually, um, you know, turning off that show, turning off that movie or saying, you know, Hey, I'm sorry. I talked this way. And I think as we sow those type of seeds, um, you know, eventually it will grow into, you know, a more easier time in resisting in the future where we can choose the right path as we daily make little choices, you know, to resist. You know, I think, you know, for pornography, you know, um, I think finding victory over that is, you know, each day you're saying, you know, I don't want to do this. Or each day you're going to pray each day. You are going to resist more and more. And then even when you're out and about, you know, you don't look at that woman who, um, or that man who is, you know, dressed in a, a more revealing way, you know, trying to guard your eyes against those things trying to guard your heart, you know, your inner thoughts saying, you know, um, you know, oh, I don't want to, uh, engage in a relationship with that person or, you know, oh, that is, uh, wrong. And then loving our enemies as well, I think is something that Jesus really points out is that, you know, um, which is very hard sometimes because, you know, um, as Christians, we want to say, you know, Hey, this is the right way. You know, you guys are wrong you know, and I think it's very important that we, um, you know, show love because, you know, hatred 
is really not going to help in any way because some people who are our enemies now, um, they do change, you know, they do um, turn away from sin. And obviously there are certain people who may never change, but, um, you know, there are certain situations where people are enemies, you know, do actually turn away or, you know, they do actually come to that revelation like, you know, hey, I, I you know, messed up here. And so um, I think that's one of the biggest reasons why Jesus, you know, might say love your enemies. Um, you know, obviously there's probably other reasons like, you know, it's the right thing to do. I mean, you know, when we were enemies of God, you know, God still showed love to us in various ways. And so, um, you know, thinking it, thinking about that from that perspective, you know, doesn't mean that you have to go hang out with them, you know, or do the same things that they're doing, you know, because I used to say, you know, oh, I'm loving my enemies by listening to this bad music because, you know, oh, I don't want someone to reject my music. So I want to listen to their music. And that's sort of twisting, you know, treating others how you want to be treated. And it's sort of twisting loving your enemies because you're not it's not fully listening to the whole counsel of God. And so, um, you know, that's important is that, you know, when trying to make certain decisions, um, and you know, what, what we do day to day, you know, it's important that we are, you know, fully listening to everything, um, that, you know, is revealed in scripture in the word of God. Um, and so those are some things that I, uh, think we can do to have peace. Um, and definitely, um, you know, we talked about prayer. Um, we talked about, um, really examining our ways, turning away from things that are not, uh, you know, are, are explicitly talked about in the word of God. Um, you know, and especially, you know, if you're drinking, you know, um, don't get drunk, you know, you know, if you are drinking, you know, the Bible expressly says, you know, don't get drunk. And then also, you know, if you're around someone, another Christian who doesn't like drinking, you need to reassess, you know, um, how you're drinking around them. And then, um, that could be a simple example or, I guess another common thing would be um, using cuss words. You know, uh, some Christians could be offended that you're cussing, even though you could think, oh, you know, as a Christian, it's OK for me to cuss because, you know, it's just a word. It doesn't really mean anything. Um, but, you know, scripture says, you know, um, let go of all filthy language. Um, and so, you know, thinking about it from that perspective, I think is important in order to find victory. And then um, perseverance, I think, is the last thing and that I want to mention is that, um, you know, we have to um, really endure until the end. And so, um, you know, finding things that can help you endure the trouble, you know, um, so that could mean, you know, putting on, you know, Christian music, putting on the Bible, um, but really, you know, um, making sure that I guess the perspective of not persevering would be, you know, oh, I'm going to do evil, you know, I'm going to get drunk or, you know, I'm going to go sleep around, you know, and that would be the opposite of perseverance or the opposite of faithfulness is, you know, saying, OK, I'm not going to turn away from evil, you know, and it's going back to those old ways, those old sinful ways. And, you know, that is something that um, is the opposite of perseverance, is the opposite of, you know, enduring until the end. And so um, anyway, that's that's what I can um, mention for today is that, um, you know, those are some things that I think we need in order to find peace. But also, um, you know, maybe watch some other videos on peace um, and then, you know, um, uh, obviously looking into the word of God about peace. Um, there are little promise books that 
kind of talk about different subjects um, and you can look at Bible verses on specific subjects and you can probably, you know, find this online as well. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've seen this online where it, it uh, there's websites that can list Bible verses according to a specific topic. And, you know, obviously you can look at it for peace and see Bible scriptures on peace and see what God is saying through that. So um, anyway, thanks for watching this video. Um, and I will talk to you on the next video. See ya.